what we were indicted for, which was nonsense, was child abuse resulting in death. And we were told, well, you didn't protect your child. And that's true. I mean, I regret that I didn't set the burglar alarm or check the windows. What about accessory? They also voted to indict on accessory. Really? I didn't know that. I don't know even what that means, frankly. Meaning that you and Patsy helped someone else. Really? Well, that's... fourth episode in the five part 23 years ago today John Bonet series wherever you are in the world um, I hope that uh, you are in a good place and that that place is going to just improve throughout 2020 that doesn't just happen we've obviously got to um, adapt to the world around us recognize reality in the world around us and um, improve our circumstances in an affirmative and authentic way and that's what true crime rocket science stands for authenticity we learn through the whole schema of true crime what happens when you live a lie how damaging it is to people how it destroys lives and so the lesson I guess from true crime is to live authentically, to, to be connected to each other and to the world and of course to ourselves. And there are certainly lessons to learn from the Ramsey case on the pageantry that is the opposite of living authentically. It's the fluff, the circus, the appearances, the pretense, the performance behind something that really happened, something that really took place. And there's no better example of this than the con job that was the grand jury trial and the aftermath of it. A con job that lasted around about 13 years where the American public were misled to believe that they had decided not to indict the Ramses, that, that the grand jury hadn't actually voted when they had. So if we're going to ask a question whether the grand jury accepted that the ransom note was from an intruder, the answer is no, they didn't. If we're going to ask the question, did the grand jury accept the intruder theory, the answer is no, they didn't. And so quite incredibly on CNN in... Um, December 13, 2016, just ahead of the... Um, 20 year anniversary there was a documentary a CNN special report the murder of John Bonan incredibly in this documentary the reporter asked John Ramsey whether he was well not whether he was aware of the indictments of course he was um, but uh, for how long he'd been not, not for how long he'd been aware of it sorry um, what he thought of them you know, what he thought of the indictments and what his answer was that he thought it was absurd his answer was that he didn't know what it meant and I want to encourage you guys to watch it yourselves I'll, I'll put a link in the video in the description um, so you can go and watch it yourselves um, it's also on patreon speaking of patreon uh, there's a new series the killing of john benet the final suspects in which the ruse is sort of perpetrated that the unknown suspects out there and, and that that you know one can maybe find them going down the list of lou detectives shortlist that he put together um, this is going to this series is going to be debunked um, in another series on Patreon just dealing with the um, ludicrousy and the lunacy in, the, in this particular series so you can head on over to Patreon for that 
And then one episode remains in this particular series where we deal briefly with the lawsuit and the last photo, which is the subject matter of my last, my latest book, um, Christmas Star on John Bonet Ramsey. So wherever you are on this seventh day of Christmas, wherever you are in the world, uh, I hope you enjoying this episode and enjoying um, the fellowship of those around you. Um, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you're interested in the Ramsey case, the Watts case, the Amanda Knox case, all the high-profile cases, also the Patrick Frazee case, this is a good channel for you to get the um, authentic facts-only analysis of these cases. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you want notifications, ring the bell, like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. To be honest, when John Ramsey responded to the CNN reporter's question, and I'm glad that she sort of followed up with her question, um, I couldn't really be believe my ears. And I really recommend you listening to the clip quite a few times, play it back, play it a couple of times, and just think about what is actually being asked and the way that it, it's being answered. Beyond the fact that it's being scoffed at, beyond the fact that it's being ridiculed and laughed at and there's contempt for the whole idea and the fact that he's laughing when he's being accused of both child abuse and the fact that it's, his, his daughter died and was murdered and he's laughing and also um, accessory to the crime of murder with his wife and he's laughing and it's absurd it's a very serious thing that um, a group of people decided that they thought he was guilty of and he's laughing and it's absurd and it's a joke. If you go to the CNN special report there's a very interesting backstory to how this information actually came to light. There was the appearance of course that the grand jury hadn't voted or that they'd voted not to indict the Ramses, right? That was the appearance and you've got to ask who kept up that appearance for 13 years. And you've got to compare that pageantry of keeping up the appearance of something that happened that didn't happen with the ransom note, the pageantry of the ransom note. And so you ask the question, how, how are five golden rings conjured into five running hairs and the answer is well with deliberation it's deliberately it's done deliberately it's not a question of four calling birds that are mistaken for someone saying four collie birds and so what's very interesting in that special report is it refers to a reporter at the Boulder Daily Camera, Charlie Brennan, who'd been covering the case all along. He was also very involved in Perfect Murder, Perfect Town with Lawrence Schiller. Um, and it was around the Christmas time of 2012 that Brennan started trying to, um, you know, get some additional information on this. I mean, this is when it when the story actually broke. And what, it, what had happened was he had started speaking to the, the jurors. And if you go into shakedown, all the jurors are actually identified. Their jobs are identified under a post about key individuals. Um, and so quite in, in quite an enterpri enterprising fashion, this Boulder reporter went and spoke one by one to the, the grand jurors and what he found out from them I guess privately was that they had listened to the trial um, you know the, in sort of a private capacity they they sat in on the trial and they were asked to um, decide what they thought and as it turned out they had actually voted they did vote and the, what they voted was was to indict the Ramses, and 
when you think about it, it's not one indictment for one person. <coughs> it's two indictments for John Ramsey and two indictments for Patsy Ramsey. So it's four indictments in total for John Bernays' parents. Four indictments in total. And in John's case, it's the one indictment was child abuse resulting in death and the other one was accessory which he claimed he didn't know the meaning of the word you know if you were accused of a crime and you didn't know the meaning of the word wouldn't you go and look it up I mean I don't believe that he doesn't know the meaning of the word but um, would you just be very blasé about it someone accused you of a crime you in the media wouldn't you go and find out about it and instead the reporter has to explain to him what a, an accessory means which results in John scoffing at it and laughing at it and it's a big joke one thing I find fascinating with the Ramsey case is it kind of all boils down to these true bills these indictments and they're not that easy to find online it's not like they are very visible they're just not very talked about. All sorts of other things are talked about like pineapple and ransom notes and broken windows. But the fact is the Ramsey case boils down ultimately to these charges, these indictments that the grand jury decided upon. And yet you never really see them, you never really see them discussed or acknowledged even. And so the one indictment reads on or about December 25th and December 26th John Ramsey did unlawfully knowingly and feloniously render assistance to a person with the intent to hinder delay and prevent the discovery detention apprehension prosecution conviction and punishment of such person for the commission of a crime knowing the person assisted as committed and was suspected of the crime of murder so this isn't accessory to someone writing a ransom note. This is accessory to murder. And child abuse resulting in death. And think about all the things that are implied there. It's the hindering, the delaying, the prevention, the... the um, and then the rendering of assistance to someone else in a way that they are assisted in a way that frustrates the law think about John Bernay Ramsey herself um, how long it took to actually discover her remains and the nature of this charge someone unlawfully knowingly and feloniously preventing the discovery of something think of the ransom note and the charge saying someone who unlawfully knowingly and feloniously intended to hinder prosecution conviction and punishment of someone involved in the commission of a crime it's very serious um, someone who is an accessory to a murder is almost equal to the murderer the, the, the crime of murder itself an accessory to murder is someone who cooperates with a murderer, who, who sort of aids and abets them. It's virtually identical. The sentences are, are often similar. Someone helping a murderer get away with their crime. And so that's count four. Then there's also, um, sorry, 4A, and then there's also count seven. Pardon me, it's actually the other way around. Uh, count seven refers to the accessory charge count 4a refers to the child abuse charge and if you look at the those words child abuse um, it's actually mentioned twice it's mentioned in the one indictment saying that the person being assisted as committed and was suspected of the crime of murder and child abuse resulting in death you follow what that's saying is that the person that is being helped the perpetrator, in other words, is suspected both of murder and of child abuse resulting in death. 
when we deal with count 4a, the words of the indictment read, John Bennett Ramsey did unlawfully, unknowing, did unlawfully, knowingly, recklessly and feloniously permit a child to be unreasonably placed in a situation which posed a threat of injury to the child's life or health, which resulted in the death of John Bennett Ramsey, a child under the age of 16. Now, when we go through the merits of this indictment, it refers to someone who knows that something is happening and recklessly allows it to continue happening, right? But this isn't a situation of an adult in the care of another adult. It's a, a situation where you have the guardian of a child, a six-year-old child. You have the parent, the custodian, the protector of a child who, and this is the accusation, allow this child to be unreasonably, unreasonably placed in a situation which posed a threat of injury to the child's life or health. So the child's life which ultimately was lost, but also the child's health. So in other words, it's an accusation saying that somebody knowingly allowed this child to be in a situation where their health was at risk. And we know that John Bonet was um, sexually assaulted or sexually interfered with. That could certainly fit in with the aspect of injury to health. But the basic spirit of this indictment is basically saying that a parent, in this case John Ramsey, knowingly allowed a child to be in a situation where he ought to have known there was a threat of injury to his child. And that led to the death of John Benet Ramsey. So, you know, we sort of looking at it at the end game where the um, indictments are revealed and we see the substance of them. But we need to sort of remember the arc of the story, which is that for many years it was sort of pretended that they'd never made any accusations and that they, in fact, decided not to indict but in fact decided they'd voted not to. And so what ac actually happened was you had a reporter coming 13 years after the fact, 12, 13 years after the fact, talking to these grand jurors and persuading them, bearing in mind that they had been sworn to secrecy under threat of um, you know, perjury or some kind of legal punishment, um, to say what had happened and they obviously felt their conscience is troubling them and so they were prepared to kind of go on the record and say yes we actually did vote to indict the Ramses on all of these charges <coughs> and what the reporter then did was he he sued for the release of this information in other words this information had been withheld People thought there's, you know, what is the point in getting um, the information if there was a, a vote not to indict, right? Or, you know, there's insu insufficient information, so we're not going to take it further. What would be the point in finding a document um, that is like a non-document? But it turned out th that th these documents existed, and so this reporter um, took the case to a judge. And in a very amazing sort of um, turn of events, the judge simply authorized it. He authorized the release of this information, only that information. And, um, and then the district attorney had nothing to say about that. Because the district attorney, Alex Hunter, was the one who opposed the actual prosecution of the case. And he didn't have any explanation for why he didn't. He said that uh, there was insufficient evidence but there clearly wasn't insufficient evidence for the grand jurors to vote on four indictments 
not one indictment for one person, not one sort of hesitant indictment on one person, four indictments on very serious charges. Accessory to murder and child abuse for two parents, not just one, two parents. And you know when the district attorney says there's insufficient evidence, what is he saying? Is there insufficient evidence of accessory? Like the ransom notes, insufficient evidence was written in the, the home. When he talks about insufficient evidence of um, child abuse, you can say, you can conflate child abuse with neglect and say, what about protracted bedwetting going on constantly? What about 30 doctor's visits in two years for, for John Bonet, with apparently with vaginitis, but could it have been something else? The, 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 the issue is that these were very serious charges and that someone in charge of prosecuting the law didn't do it and hasn't explained why it didn't do it. And so it's within this um, context that we've got to think about the intruder narrative still being recycled in the media and still being talked about within the context of, of what the grand jury voted and the fact that this information was sidelined, suppressed, uh, hidden in kind of a nice little theatrical performance where people imply and suggest and infer something, but it's actually not true. And it's about the law, by the way. They're making inferences and they're making uh, deceitful claims about legal things that aren't actually true. And then within the context of all that, you have this discussion that the intruder theory is legitimate. And so if you still in the dark about this question of how do you conjure five golden rings into five running hairs, well, this is exactly how you do it. You simply laugh and scoff at something that doesn't suit the narrative you've been pushing out there. It's absurd and you don't even know what it means. But you know very clearly what um, your theory means and what it means to you and what how it serves your interests. And so if we cycle back to that Vanity Fair article and the words of FBI profiler Greg McCreary, the same guy who turned down the Ramses uh, when they contacted him on January the 5th to kind of, you know, profile them and kind of excuse them or whatever, get them off the hook. Um, remember what was said there, on a ratio of 12 to 1, child murders are committed by parents or a family or a family member. And so it's within this context um, that we then re return to that collage of four images where John Bonet's body is removed from the crime scene. And one of the reporters was saying that um, there were only three people in that house that we know the identity of. And what do you think that um, quote of McCreary refers to? And so in a CNN special, it devotes basically the last minute or so, the last couple of seconds of the last minute, to that third member of the family. And that was essentially the meat and potatoes of the CBS documentary uh, that came out in 2016. Um, it was supposed to be a three-parter. Um, it was eventually culled after two and the um, station CBS was sued for 750 million. We'll deal with that in the next episode. But suffice it to say, this documentary focused its attention on this third member of the family and they were sort of basically prevented from completing their story. They, they were, it was basically taken off air. And this was in 2016 on the 20-year anniversary. Okay, so folks, that's it for episode four, which is the penultimate episode in the series. Um, if you're interested in the analysis um, that, that I've covered, and I've really covered it very, very lightly, it's really just skipping through some of the details. 
But if you're interested in some much deeper analysis, a much c- a more cogent, streamlined narrative, um, go and check out Christmas Star. It's about 100 pages long, v- available on Kindle. Um, someone said to me today that um, the two best books I've written in the last while are the, are the last two books, um, Murder Most Foul and Christmas Star. So, so that's certainly one you might want to read if you haven't read any. So, um, yeah, so there will also be further analysis um, of this particular topic on Patreon. We'll be looking at the murder weapon, and the murder weapon is not the torch or the flashlight. It's not a golf club. It's not baseball bats or softball bats. It's something else. We'll also be looking at um, some of the mainstream theories and why they, they're wrong, including um, those that don't believe in the intruder theory and then also um, something that should be obvious by now but isn't um, John Bernays cause of death and um, besides that there will also be a new series um, debunking the killing of John Bernays podcast series just there's a lot of absurdity in there about the intruder theory so that's on Patreon uh, head to Patreon slash TCRS and then Stand by for the last episode, which will come out tomorrow, um, the second day in the new year, um, dealing with the lawsuit and the last photo. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do um, like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.